So we're at the beginning of April now and uh, everything started to get on the move. Um, certainly I think we've seen the worst of frost, we're not going to get many more. And as plants start to shoot up, we can start seeing the bits that have been damaged or knocked back during the winter. And now's a good time, prune everything off, particularly with your herbs, um, and give the, uh, the, the bed here a top dress, and then finally uh, to replace where obviously you lost one or two things. So certainly over here, we're looking at all this last year's growth, it's not come back, clean it off, move it out the way. And then again, in the case of the mint, starting to shoot up now, all the growth that was there during last year has died back. New growth you can see is appearing. It always pays to leave that on over the winter because you never know how strong it's going to be. And sometimes uh, you can lose even more than this, but this is just right. Trim it all back level. And there we are, it's all ready to go. Moving round here again, a little bit more dead stuff. Trim it all off. Good pair of seconders. So a slightly more respectable bed than when we started. Everything's ready to shoot away now. I'd be inclined to get a little bit of well-rotted compost from the, somewhere else in the allotment and just give it a thin spread over, give it a start. And as I say, there are two or three gaps here to put other things in. The good thing about containerizing your herbs is particularly with mint, I was a very uh, quick grower and would take over the rest of the plot and also a lot easier for the kids to come and pick as well. So um, that's already. You could also, if you want to, start sowing uh, some herbs now. And again, there's many good packets on the market, varieties on the market for you to do that. But uh, that's the first job that I would start. I'm now going to move on to doing some seed sowing and other tips for this time of the year. April is when everything starts to move, and we should also be starting to move because it's a good month to get all the stuff in nice and early, ready for the rest of the season. So now we moved over to the, uh, the raised bed and this is a great place for starting off a lot of things like the winter brassicas, the savoys, uh, the cauliflower, uh, sprouts and what have you because you need to sow them now in order to get young plants to transplant later on out into the allotment. The important thing is always have a good sturdy line to work with. A lot of people use two bamboo canes and a bit of string and invariably it runs loose. You can't beat a decent garden line. Now, a lot of people actually then hoe out a drill. The problem is it's all at different depths and the, the, the seed will then be put in some at a certain level, some at a bit deeper. The deeper ones may not even make it to the surface. So the best thing to use is a nice stout stick. And then all you need to do is just run down the side of the line and you create an even drill right the way through. And you go obviously right to the end there. But in creating that, things like carrots, there's good time to get them in. And the other good advantage with carrots is, of course, by doing them in a raised bed, they're so much easier to fleece over to prevent that wretched carrot fly from getting in and destroying all the hard work you've done earlier. So um, there's many varieties of carrot you can use, this Thompson and Morgan's. Um, it's rightly called fly away, so uh, let's hope they do. Um, and then the good tip with carrots and a lot of the other finer seeds is to get some fine sand. Um, you could buy that in any good garden centre. And the fine sand needs to be dry. Don't just buy it straight from the centre and then mix it. It will be like concrete. So very fine, silty sand. And you mix that in, in a cup or a saucer or whatever, with the seed so that when you sow you get a much more even distribution. Now in terms of when the carrot comes up 
as soon as the rough leaves start to appear, that is the time to start thinning them out. And that's best done late at night. Uh, um, the carrot fly are lazy and they don't move around at night, so it cuts down the smell, attracting them towards the, uh, the, the crop. So I'd be doing that now with the uh, carrots, all your uh, brassicas, they could all be going out. Important thing is, of course, once you sow, is to put the label in, the label with the name of the variety and the date to which you sowed it at the end. And then just lightly cover that over. Equally, leeks is another thing that you can be doing at this time of the year. Um, and there's two advantages to broadcasting the seed with leeks. Yes, make several drills, but sow an awful lot of them. You will then get the ones you want to then transplant into your allotment to produce the leek for the winter crop, but you will also get a lot more of young leeks coming up. And these just make such a good summer substitute in the, uh, as a vegetable. So uh, by broadcasting them like that, you'll get a whole lot come up. The ones you want to save, the bigger ones to go into the plot, the rest you can keep picking uh, for uh, summer eating. The other thing that can be planted out now is the beetroot. The beetroot, as you know, has got a very rough coat to it. That's because that is protecting the seed within the actual coat. So what you do, a good tip, because they're not even germinators, is to actually put the seed in a, a bowl of water like that for about an hour. That will soften up the outer coat and then you can plant them out in the drills that we prepared earlier. So as I say, it's an easy tip, some people don't do it and then wonder why they don't get such a good germination. But by doing it this way, you're guaranteed them an even germination. And then when they come up, you'll get one or two close together, just take those away. And if you leave them till they, just before they form the gloat, which will eventually be the beetroot you eat, those leaves make a lovely decoration in salads, they're all very edible. The thing about gardening is you want to get as much out of everything you use and they've all got different uses at different times. So um, um, the bed now is ready for all the other things you want to put out there. The good thing about using a raised bed is that you become much more disciplined in the amount of crops you grow and successful growing is the successful way to do it. So we will have sown this early crop of carrot and then in a few weeks time, maybe a bit later, you do another sowing. So whilst these are getting ready to harvest, you've got the next coming on. And that can be crop rotated with a whole variety of different things. You've got the early starters, then a bit later on. And because it's in such a confined area, you won't have rows and rows of them and then find you give half of them away or you get fed up of eating them. So it's a very disciplined way of doing it. So when you've sown all your winter brassicas, the cabbages, the cauliflowers, the Brussels sprouts, the one thing that you've got to remember is to cover that area. And the reason being, the allotment, wide open, lots of trees. Who's sitting there watching every move I make? Mr. Pigeon. And as soon as those young plants start to come up, he'll bring his family down, and the next time you come to do your allotment, it will be just stalks not cabbages so netting or something like that again with a raised bed it's easy to secure it down and that will protect the young plants as they're growing up ready for you then to transplant them out courgettes marrows squashes lovely but they erratic germinators just to give them a good start what i suggest you do is to get a tray like that and then get some uh, kitchen uh, roll make sure it's nice and moist and then get the the packet of courgette marrow or squash or whatever it is and just spread them all over that surface then what you need to do is to put a cover over the top but although uh, and then cover that over completely so it's completely blackened a towel or something like that and then place it into the airing cupboard leave it there for about four or five days and that when you look again, you will see that the uh, squashes, the marrow and the courgette have started to sprout. Then you can plant them into these little uh, containers that you can actually plant straight into the ground. Yes, you can use uh, uh, clay pots or plastic pots, 
but these are so much better. One of the things that you need to do if you're going to do that is to make sure these are nice and moist before you actually do the process so that then they break down that bit quicker. And once you've actually planted them in there on the windowsill or if you have a cold greenhouse, fine, and then just keep turning them so the light doesn't push them one way. And then when they're big enough, they've hardened off, then you can plant them straight out. It's much the, the quickest and the most profitable way of getting to germinate. So on something like that, but make sure it's covered over, leave it in the air and covered for about five days, then bring them out and then place them into the individual pots. Put those pots in a, another tray like that, on the windowsill, whatever, and then you're ready to actually start planting them out, probably um, middle to late May. One of the things that we're all very concerned about is looking after our bees. It's a really serious problem, and they are the pollinators. They do all the hard work for us. So in order to actually uh, assist in that way, I always like to plant up an area, particularly at the entrance to the allotment, that gives not only a bit of colour, but it also provides the vital nectar that our lovely bees want. Um, there's several um, very good, Thompson and Morgans do a very good uh, wildflower mix, and it contain corn, cockle and poppy and what have you. Basically what you want to do is to rake the ground over level as we have here, and then with the rake, rather than the uh, um, uh, bamboo stick that I talked about earlier, is to just rake out a small drill, not too deep, right across the area, and then as we say, broadcast the seed so that it's actually spread evenly over the whole plot. Um, lots of other things like corn flour, the nigella, the uh, um, love in the mist, and cosmos. Cosmos is a great garden plant for everybody, whether it be in the allotment or at home. A good cut flower plant, you can use it in the house as well. But a good mixture of everything like that, evenly spread over that area there, um, and it gives a nice attractive entrance way in there. And more importantly, it provides the nectars for the bees that will then buzz around all the things you want them to do as well. So now is a good time to start doing it. Some people prefer to get the young plum plants of them, but quite honestly, these annuals are very easy to come up. There's a good selection on the market now. Get them out now and then just clear the area over um, and fill it back in afterwards, just lightly uh, push it back in and leave them to do the rest.